Hello everyone. Let's learn about chylomicron's metabolism. At the end of the session, you should be able to describe chylomicron's metabolism and the hyperlipoproteinemia associated with this metabolism. Let's begin with some important characteristics of chylomicrons. They are largest in size out of all lipoproteins. It has largest diameter. Highest concentration of triacylglycerol are present in chylomicrons. It has least apoprotein content and it has least density. It carries exogenous that is dietary triacylglycerol from intestine to peripheral tissues. Chylomicron is synthesized in the intestinal cell as nascent chylomicron. This nascent chylomicron has apop B48 associated with it. The other apoprotein which is associated with it can be apo A1 but it is not shown here. Triacylglycerol and cholesterol esters are packaged together along with apo B48 and it is called as nascent chylomicron. In the circulation, it acquires other two important apoproteins called as APOE and APOC2 and it becomes mature chylomicron. Later in the course of metabolism, it becomes smaller in size, triacylglycerol content is reduced and it only has APOE and APOB48 and it is called as chylomicron remnant. Chylomicron's metabolism starts in the intestinal cell with the formation of chylomicrons. It occurs in endoplasmic reticulum of uh, intestinal cells where triacylglycerol and cholesterol are packaged into chylomicrons. The chylomicron which is formed in intestine is associated with ApoB48. It is also associated with ApoA1. It is then secreted into the lymphatic system and through the thoracic duct it is delivered to circulation. And the chylomicron which is associated with ApoB48 it is called as nascent chylomicron. In the circulation it acquires other two apoproteins ApoE and ApoC2 from circulating HDL and it becomes mature chylomicron. This mature chylomicron is then transported in the circulation and it reaches to peripheral tissues like muscles and adipose tissue. Now let's see what happens in muscle and adipose tissue. In the muscle capillary walls the enzyme lipoprotein lipase is expressed and the APOC2 which is associated with Mature chylomicron, it activates this lipoprotein lipase. The hormone insulin can also activate this lipoprotein lipase and that's why chylomicron metabolism is important in well-fed condition. What is the action of this lipoprotein lipase? It causes hydrolysis of triacylglycerol present in the chylomicrons and it breaks it down into glycerol and fatty acids. The glycerol goes to the liver and fatty acids are taken up by muscle cells by fatty acid transporter protein and CD36. In the muscle fatty acids are utilized for energy purpose and some free fatty acids are also transported in the circulation bound to albumin. In the adipose tissue also lipoprotein lipase is expressed which is activated by APOC2 and insulin. This lipoprotein lipase breaks down triacylglycerol into fatty acids and glycerol. Glycerol is transported back to liver and fatty acids are taken up by adipocytes and these fatty acids are stored in the form of triacylglycerol in adipose tissues. In this way, this exogenous lipoprotein pathway results in the efficient transfer of dietary fatty acids from intestine to
to muscle and adipose tissue in the muscle they are utilized for energy purpose and in adipose tissue the fatty acids are stored as triacylglycerol the hydrolysis of triacylglycerol results in decrease in size of this chylomicron and it leads to formation of chylomicron remnants these chylomicron remnants are enriched in cholesterol esters and the apo a and apo c on the surface of these chylomicrons are transported back to hdl and now this chylomicron remnant is it has only apo e and apo b48 associated with it the transfer of apo c2 from chylomicron to hdl decreases the ability of lipoprotein lipase to further break down triglycerides and then these chylomicron remnants are cleared from the circulation by liver now let's see how it is cleared by the liver from circulation the liver expresses three important receptors the first is ldl receptors second is lrp that is ldl receptor related protein and the third is receptor for apob48 that is heparin sulfate proteoglycan the apoe which is associated with chylomicron remnant can bind to both ldl receptors and lrp and b48 binds to hspg and whole this chylomicron remnant is taken up by the hepatocyte now let's see what is the fate of this chylomicron remnant once it's inside the hepatocyte the protein part that is apoprotein is utilized for protein synthesis the cholesterol which is taken up by the hepatocytes has multiple fates the first phase fate is that it is incorporated in the cell membrane as it is the important constituent of cell membrane second it can be stored by the action of enzyme acyl coa acyl transferase third is the degradation of cholesterol into bile acids and then bile salts which are then secreted back to intestine via secretion in the bile the fourth fate of cholesterol is that it can be incorporated in the vldl formation vldl is a, another lipoprotein which is synthesized in hepatocytes what is the fate of triacylglycerol which is acquired from chylomicron remnant by hepatocytes this triacylglycerol along with the triacylglycerol which is formed in hepatocyte in well fed condition from fatty acids and glycerol it is incorporated in the vldl this vldl requires one important apoprotein that is apob100 and it is synthesized in rough endoplasmic reticulum thus along with this apob100 and tag which is acquired from chylomicron remnant and that is synthesized in hepatocytes along with some cholesterol the vldl formation occurs and then it is released in the circulation this vldl carries endogenous triacylglycerol from liver to peripheral tissues what will happen if the chylomicron uh, is transported to the peripheral tissue and apo c2 is not functioning properly and lipoprotein lipase is also defective or not properly expressed so if apo c2 is not functioning properly it cannot activate lipoprotein lipase and if lipoprotein lipase is not active it cannot hydrolyze the triacylglycerol of chylomicrons into glycerol and fatty acids so it will lead to increased level of triacylglycerol in the blood and this condition is called as type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia or familial lipoprotein lipase deficiency and the cause of this disorder is either a defective lipoprotein lipase or deficient lipoprotein lipase or apo c2 deficiency type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia or it is also called as familial lipoprotein lipase deficiency it is due to the deficiency of lipoprotein lipase enzyme which is expressed in the capillary walls of adipose tissues and muscle 
and it plays a very important role in breakdown of triacylglycerol of chylomicron in the well fed condition so the deficiency of lipoprotein lipase and apoc2 apoc2 activates this lipoprotein lipase enzyme if both are deficient it leads to type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia and it also leads to increased tag level in blood and the serum in this patient looks lipemic like this so the patients of type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia has lipemic serum total cholesterol is usually normal in this condition ldl hdl can be normal or decreased and it shows the presence of eruptive xanthoma on the which suddenly appears on the body of patients especially on the hands buttocks and exterior surface of extremities these eruptive xanthomas are cl clinically characterized by small yellowish orange to reddish brown papules and they are associated with increased triacylglycerol level in blood this condition is also associated with pancreatitis but it is not associated with atherosclerosis so no atherosclerosis is seen in type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia